Yes, Jack Summer. This is another edition of the Spectre, and I'm doing an episode I was been, uh, thinking about doing for a while. Um, I was reluctant to do so because I don't think a lot of people are that familiar with um, this individual who I'm talking about, who is uh, uh, John C. Holmes, who was a uh, porn star in the 70s. Um, well, he was in the 80s as well, but um, that was the heyday was the 70s. He uh, he had a uh, the reason he was a big porn star is because he had a giant dick, basically. That's really to, without mincing words. So he, uh, so, um, so to just let's just talk a little bit about this cat and um, some of the significant things that he was involved in. Um, first, to be noted, he was a t pretty awful human being. Um, he did some pretty awful things. He uh, he was ma actually married before he became a, a porn star. He didn't, he didn't get into the porn when he was like super, super young. I think he was maybe in his late 20s by then, nearly 30 years old, because he was married. He got married young um, to a nurse named uh, Sharon Gabinini, if I'm pronouncing it right, in 1965. So he got married. Um, I don't know what she was thinking he was going to do eventually when, um, um, I guess, porn films became more in vogue in the 70s, but, uh, and keep in mind, it was illegal to do porn movies in the, in the 70s. I mean, you couldn't make them. Um, it was, it sort of fell under the, uh, prostitution laws. So, uh, you could show them, they could be, um, distributed legally for the most part, um, but, uh, but it was illegal to make them, so they would have to sneak around and make them, and, go to sort of clandestine locations and, and sort of to throw off the authorities. So, but they, they would get busted quite regularly back then when they were making these movies. And um, so, yeah, uh, so John C. Holmes was born in, on August 8th, 1944, and he died on uh, March 13th, 1988. Not shockingly of AIDS. Um... He, uh, he acquired that in, in the 80s after he got back into business. Um, so, and there was sort of a disruption in his porn career between, you know, the time, that time, between the 70s era, which would probably be sort of the, I don't know if you call it the golden age, but that kind of what it was when they made movies and they released them in theaters and things like that. Um, they were, it was a little different business then. So, he, um... He made, God, thousands of movies, um, thousands of women, um, and, um, but he got mixed up with, like, a lot of shady shit, like people do, especially back then. He became a, a, a bit of a drug addict. He became, like, a freebase addict. He was really into coke, so he began, like, basically freebasing coke, and, um, eventually, be, uh, got... Um, indebted to a drug dealer, a drug sort of kingpin out in uh, the Los Angeles area named Eddie Nash. And, uh, and then, I mean, John Holm, he carried around like an attache case with his, like, with his, with his, you know, like, um, paraphernalia, like his torch and all that stuff. And, um, he was always, you know, eventually he just became, uh, hopelessly addicted to this shit. And, um, so it was also made it, made it difficult for him to like perform clearly and so um, things just began to spiral out of control for this guy um, he his wife actually stayed well, didn't stay with him but his wife um, uh, kind of would was there for him after he got into the business but said he wasn't going she wasn't going to you know sort of, it was more in a platonic way, but she was obviously very, you know, very, she was not okay with this shit, but still, um, helped him from time to time, took him in, things like that. Um, and during this time also, uh, uh, John Holmes became involved with a young teenage girl named Dawn Schiller. Um, and if you see, there's a movie called, uh, 
Wonderland with Val Kilmer that um, actually um, is is like a literal depiction of this, and um, the movie Boogie Nights is loosely based on John Holmes, but that's, um, but you know, just very loosely, for pretty much. There's a few things that actually really parallel um, his life and career, but it, it's it's you know, it's a fictional account, but it's a really good movie. Um, so anyway, uh, he. He became, you know, he was, he was, um, when things really started to get bad, I mean, he had sort of the heyday of his career. He had a character named uh, Johnny Wad. It was like a uh, sort of a uh, private eye guy, you know, and he, um, private investigator character, and it was just a lot of, you know, really cheesy sort of plots and stuff like that where he's kind of like, you know, he always has a gun for some reason, even though most private investigators don't have guns. But anyway, <laughs> just to, it just to make a more romanticized version of it, where he's like a badass, he's some sort of dirty, hairy porn character. So he um, so he made a series of these Johnny Wad movies, and he he uh, be, you know became increasingly addicted to you know blow and, and, and stuff like that and eventually um, you know he, he, he would do whatever he could to get drugs or like that he would he would pimp his girlfriend out and, and um, just do awful fucking horrible things and Eddie Nash was a real scumbag but he kept John Holmes around because he was like a celebrity at the time I mean he was actually you know one of those people he was um, everybody knew who he was eventually because uh, a lot of people went to porn movies. People from all walks of life went to them. They were, you know, um, in theaters and you know, a lot of cities around the world, around the country. Um, and he became very well known. So Eddie kept him around, like um, you know, John. What he would make, he would kind of humiliate John and make him in, out to be kind of a circus freak in a way. He would he would make him like whip his dick out and stuff like that when people would demand it because he had this like 14 inch dick or, and, um, which is kind of fucked up. I mean you know, um, and uh, you know I don't think that I, don't, I mean on it, obviously that wouldn't be a really it wouldn't really uh, it would be just be very uncomfortable to to uh, be in that situation I guess after a while and just it would it it kind of I would imagine denigrated him but. Um, John Holmes was a hustler, and he, he was also a liar. He lied about his life a lot. He said that he went to, you know, college at UCLA, which he didn't, and he lied about his past often. Um, and, and a lot of it was at the, maybe it's the suggestion of his publicist, which is hard to believe a porn star would have a publicist, but they do. And, um, if you want to call him that. But, so eventually, you know, I mean, after he had, um accrued enough of a drug debt, um, John um, began hanging out with this uh, group of people who lived on uh, Wonderland Avenue, and they referred to the Wonderland Gang. And Eddie had, they um, cooked up this scheme to rob Eddie Nash, you know, to get drugs, cash, whatever. So they uh, uh, masqueraded as, like, uh, cops and went in and bust the place and, um, you know, took a lot of money and drugs and stuff like that, and out of retaliation, Eddie Nash had, I mean, I don't know if he ever got exactly, I don't, he didn't get um, convicted of this, but um, they know basically that he did it. Eddie Nash had these, uh, um, had, had the people who lived at this house on Wonderland Avenue um, just beaten, and mostly, most of them were killed. Um, there was, I think, two people that survived, um, one of them had a lot of, I mean, just severe head trauma and all that. Uh, I don't think they were able to really identify any, you know, the perpetrators per se, but uh, Holmes um, is suspected of being involved with it. Eddie made him um, beat some of these people with a pipe along with these other accomplices to uh, because Eddie pretty much knew that John was involved with robbing him at his house. And this happened about on uh, 1981. Um, so it was about June 29th, 1981 this happened. So this was after John Holmes's career had gone to shit. 
after, you know, his reign in the 70s as the Sultan of Smut, or whatever you want to call him. And <laughs> that's one of his um, pseudonyms, but yeah. He, um, so he, so he was allegedly involved in that. Um, the movie with Val Kilmer, uh, the one, the called Wonderland, um, it, it's sort of basically, it, it, that's, it depicts John as being one of the perpetrators. But he was acquitted of this. Um, strangely enough, uh, he was. I mean, every, he, he did pretty much, he could, I mean, he did everything you could possibly do to screw your life up and get in, get in trouble. And he didn't, you know, wind up, you know, serving any, you know, wind up in jail for a long time or anything like that. Um, I guess they just couldn't place him there. It was just one of those things. I've seen the video. Um, it was it was some time ago. It's you can see it on YouTube. I wouldn't recommend watching it of the Wonderland. The, they went through with a uh, they videotaped the entire um, scene after they discovered they came upon and they went to investigate the the crime scene. And it's brutal. It's some of the it's awful. It's it's just I, I it almost looks worse than anything you've seen like photographs or any kind of, of from like the Manson murders. It's it's absolutely horrifying. So um, he got acquitted of that. His eventually his uh, girlfriend Don, that was around the time Don Schiller his girlfriend who when I think when he met her she was like fifteen, um, and he had been pimping her out. Um, and, and everything, and, you know, just, just horrible, horrible shit. So, she, um, um, so she basically, they, they split apart. She, um, you know, she got her life together and, and moved on with her life and everything like that, but he was a fucking, you know, um, he, event, he went back to making adult films in the 80s, um, and he, when he got really hard up and desperate, he made some gay movies, um, and I'm not, I don't know if that's the reason he got AIDS or anything like that. I mean, that could have been from anywhere at that point. But he, after he contracted AIDS, he went to Italy and made porn movies. And um, because, you know, they just weren't aware of it or they didn't have the same, you know. There wasn't, there wasn't really a lot of, I mean, at that point in time, a lot of regulations or anything involved with, like, making adult films. So, but... Um, and I don't, I don't know who he told he when he did contract HIV, but uh, in any case, uh, it, but it was, he, he was a pretty, I mean, depends on, the, you know, different people say different things about him in little documentaries I've seen about him, but most, uh, they either say he was a complete sociopath or he was some fucking great guy. Um, before he died, he did get married again to a porn star named Misty Dawn, and together they, uh, well, she later published a book that supposedly he wrote, and it's called, uh, I don't know, it's too I'm holding it up front because the lighting's not that good, but it's, I mean, Porn King, the autobiography of John C. Holmes, and this isn't something you can, like, really find on Kindle, um, you know, they're around. It was just independently published. But he was married to uh, a woman. Her name, her real name was Lori. Um, when they were married, her name was Lori Holmes. But her, she was a porn star named Misty Dawn. Um, I, I, that's kind of how they met. But she, um, I, you know, obviously she's not in the business anymore. But she's still alive. But she probably, um, but they got married in January of 1987. 14 months before he died, and, um, it's mostly full of, like, at best half-truths, but, um, I, I would say it's largely full of shit, and, and she, um, even she's not really completely honest with, with the nature of their relationship, because it was really awful, because he was a terrible person, and he treated her like shit, and, um, <laughs> I guess, but if you ever watch, like, a documentary or anything about it, um, there's a few of them out there. There's, like, um, a life measured in inches, and I think the life and times of John C. Holmes and all that stuff, but, um, the, anytime she's interviewed, if you ever see some clips of that, I mean, it's, it's pretty, it, it's, she, she's clearly, like, um, she's not being completely forthright, but maybe he was a little bit nicer to her, I don't know. Um, but, um, 
she she never contracted AIDS or anything like that from him. And this is the 80s when, you know, it was pretty, people were in the dark about AIDS. Um, and, it, and it was a big scare for the adult industry at the time. Um, but yeah, it's, it's just awful. It really is. Um, <laughs> to be in that business. I don't, I don't know why people would ever do that. It's just like, it's, I think it's kind of, I mean, I can understand like, you know, you're, you like, you graduate high school and you don't have a, you know, like, and let's say you're physically attractive or whatever, or you're, you know, whether you're a man or a woman and, and you're just like, you have no other options. You're not, you know, your parents aren't loaded. You're not going to fucking Harvard. So, hey, make porn, you know, you can, um, it's, it's, you can make a lot more money than working at the fucking, you know, fast food place or whatever, whatever your options are. But, um, it's still not a, it's, it's a, usually a bad business to get into and it, it eats a lot of people alive. Um, he would have actually had, you know, he was, he was very, you know, he was, he was a highly paid adult, adult star and had he played his cards right, he probably would have been, I mean, easily been a millionaire by the time he was, you know, through with it, but, you know, when you're freebasing coke and running around, I mean, it's not like he's, you know, a, uh, some sort of, um, investment broker, he's a freaking porn star, so they just blow through it, you know, it's, it's like anything else, you know, um, when some people get even, you know, famous, they just, uh, they don't know how to handle money at all, and it's just, um, you have access, I mean, you're right in a business where there's just drugs everywhere, and, um, and the adult and the um, just, you know, mainstream show business, that's the one thing they have in common is there's just drugs everywhere. And even back in the 70s, um, like, I mean, mainstream show business and, and the porn business did intersect a lot. Um, they, um, I mean, even on, I think it was like Paramount or one of the, some of the studios that um, they would, I guess, in a more clan, sort of secretly lease space to... Um, adult filmmakers to make, you know, movies, just, just to, you know, if it's, they're not using it, mean money's money, so they, I guess they didn't care. Um, and a lot of, uh, mainstream directors did work on them back then, um, Wes Craven has said he worked on adult movies, um, and all that stuff, and it's, it's, you know, what you did, you're an independent filmmaker, those, those worlds were kind of, would intersect at times, and, you know, it's, you're not, you're like, you know, it's, I mean, a lot of these horror movie people, they would make independent movies and, you know, independent horror movies and, you know, um, it's, it's, that, I mean, porn made money, so that's what you did, you know, I mean, it was a paying gig, you just didn't, you know, you couldn't be too picky when you were starting out in the business, and that's why a lot of them wound up doing it. Um, but, um, John Holmes just, he became a pretty, you know, he's, he, I think he still is. I mean, other than, like, you know, some of the, like, Ron Jeremy is one of the only other, you know, well-known male porn stars that I can, you know, that most people would be familiar with. He's had a little bit of, you know, he's he's been on reality shows and shit like that, and he's been in, like, a lot of porn movies um, since the early 80s. Um, he, he's one of the other ones, and, like, maybe Tracy Lords, and, of course, there's other. I mean, I'm talking about the ones back in the 80s and 70s, so um, the infamous ones, but he, yeah, John Holmes was a total piece of shit, that's just all there is to it, he, he was, he was pretty awful, I mean, he did, he, he, you know, stole money and stole people's shit and robbed people to pay for his habit, he pimped out his girlfriend, and, um, and all of that, but he, uh, didn't, he did not get, um, as far as the Wonderland murders are concerned, he didn't, he didn't get convicted of it. He was acquitted in 1982, um, about a year later after it happened, and he just, after that, at some point, um, it was, he, he acquired AIDS and died pretty quickly, though. I think he acquired it within, like, he got, when he got, he was HIV positive in a year later, he died. Um, it's not like he really took all that great a care of himself. Uh, pretty heavy smoker. Um, and all that, and, um, he just, but he was, he was, he was a train wreck of a human being. Um, if you ever do see the movie Boogie Nights, that's like, that'll give you an eye, a little bit of an, maybe an idea of what, um, that, 
of how he kind of lived his life a little bit, but it's not it's not really a uh, it's not a straight uh, documentary movie about him. Um, I mean, the two characters, um, like Dirk Diggler's character, doesn't doesn't isn't you know he just comes straight from his parents' house and stuff like that. He's younger and you know it was just meant to be loosely based on it. Um, but God, awful. But the the murder that or the the uh, you know the uh, four murders that. Um, he was involved with allegedly where we're just beyond fucking brutal it's 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 pretty awful there's a book about it called four on the floor um, and um, there's um I don't know if that's on Amazon or Kindle or not but um, I know this isn't but this is like a you know I had to kind of look for this but you can you know find it online um, they didn't really, it's, it didn't have like a heavy print run because it's, 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 it's a 160 page breezy read and it's, it's pretty full of shit. He just lies about like, you know, he, I guess he supposedly, you know, he was, there was, there was like, he was a high paid, you know, male escort and overseas and that kind of stuff. And he just, he just makes up a lot of sort of romanticized stories of his, of his sexcapades, you know, and, um, but God, what a, what a terrible fucking human being. Um, <laughs> he really is, that always, that always occurred to me anytime someone brought, brought this up to me. I mean, the first time I ever heard of this, I was working at a, a radio station when I was a teenager, and the jan the night janitor told me about the golden age of porn, and, all of these, you know, actors and stuff like that. And that's when I first heard about these people. And I thought it was kind of interesting, but, and in, in a little bit, you know, comical too, but um, he, you know, he, he did become this sort of um, legend and um, he's, he's still uh, talked about today, of course, case in point here. But, um, uh, yeah, but he... Um, you know, he, he died, uh, uh, I don't think he would have, you know, I don't know what, what he'd be doing if he, if he was still around today or anything like that, if he would have gotten any mainstream success. He wasn't very, I mean, he wasn't a complete moron, but he wasn't very bright. I think he was just, he knew how to hustle. Um, he wasn't very educated. So he, he just kind of knew how to, you know, he, I don't think he really had much... I mean, considering he, he had a very abusive upbringing and not much of a, uh, there just, there just wasn't much there going on inside other than that. I think it was just a lot of id with him, you know what I mean? Just a lot of, he didn't, he didn't really, um, think about how his, the consequences of his actions affected other people in his lives. It was just, he was one of those cats, you know, kind of like the president right now, you know? If John Holmes would have lived, we would have, like, President Holmes right now. We'd have the first ex-porn star president when it comes down to it. That'd be interesting. I think I'd rather have him as president than Trump. God. Anyway, so that's my um, take on um, John C. Holmes. Um, if you uh, have any uh, comments you'd like to leave, feel free to leave your comments, you know, threats and unhinged rants below. Um, 